It's like the kiss of death. It's when your spouse comes to you and says, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Is it time to panic when you hear that? Actually, it may be. Oh, I'm not trying to instill fear in you, but we talk about reality and how you can really face life as it is. If you want to get to where you need to go, you have to accept where you're starting from. Hi, I'm Dr. Joe Beam. I'm with Marriage Helper. As a matter of fact, we have a lot of videos and are making more all the time. And if you'd like to subscribe, we'd love to have you just right down there. See that button? You click that and subscribe, and then you'll know about every video we put up. Some are about affairs. Some are about marriage. Some are just about relationships. As a matter of fact, everything you can imagine about relationships, and we'd love to have you as a subscriber. But what about this? My spouse said, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. What does that mean? It typically means I have an emotion for you, but it's not what I want. Now, why would a person say that? Well, for some people, and these are relatively rare, these are people who have finally decided, I don't want any relationship. I want to be alone. Now, you heard me say they're relatively rare, and they are. And that could be happening with your spouse. It's not likely, but it's definitely possible that he or she just wants to go off and be by themselves. Typically, when that happens, it's somebody who has been hurt so many times in life. Parents, siblings, friends, maybe even by you, although I'm not trying to blame this on you at all. Please don't hear that. And finally reach the point of thinking, I shouldn't be in any relationship because all relationships wind up hurting me at some point. That's one possibility. Not the most likely possibility, but one possibility. Another is, you know, I feel this emotion with you, but I feel like there's something more I can have, and I want to go looking for it out there. And so I love you, but I'm not in love with you, which means that I've heard other people describe what they feel. I watch the things on the TV. I see the things in the movies, and I want to go see if I can find that for me. That might be what they're saying. Or, or unfortunately, they may be saying, I do feel this in love feeling with somebody else. I'm not blaming you. I'm not angry with you. As a matter of fact, there's a part of me that still has positive emotions about you. Therefore, I love you, but I'm in love with him. I'm in love with her. And so I love you, but I'm not in love with you is basically setting up a situation where it's like, but I am in love. Now, they may not be ready to admit that right now. They may not want to tell you that that's going on in their lives at this particular moment. They may be very deceitful. Now, if you're going to deal with this, if you really want to save the marriage, and if your spouse has told you, I love you, but I'm not in love with you anymore, if you really want to fix this, then you need to accept what he or she feels, even if you don't like it. Because if you come back, no, no, you do love me, and you start trying to explain to him or convince him or her that indeed love is there, the in love kind of love is there, it's not going to do you any good. And as a matter of fact, it makes you look desperate. Oh, and it certainly makes the other person convinced. You don't get me. You don't understand me. You don't know who and what I am. You see, if you look at the reasons that people divorce, if you look at the research about that, by far the most common reasons that people divorce is I don't feel like you love me. I don't feel like you like me. I don't feel that you respect me. And if he or she has felt that, whether you intended to communicate that or not, if you have been disrespectful by trying to control, dominate, argue, whatever, that you have always tried to get your way. I mean, there's a ton of different ways this can be demonstrated. But if you've demonstrated disrespect, it, whether you meant to or not, and I'm not trying to make yourself like a bad person here, but that can set up a person being vulnerable, either not wanting to be with you, I love you, but I'm not in love with you, or being susceptible to developing a relationship with somebody else where they feel respected. The same to do with love and like. Like, I want to know just that, not just that you feel good toward me in the sense that you love me. I want to know that you like me, that you look at me and see me and think there are good attributes here. I'm a person you enjoy being around. I'm a person you enjoy talking to. And so if indeed, again, I'm not trying to beat you up. We're just trying to deal with reality. If indeed you have been demonstrating toward him or her disrespect, a lack of love, a lack of liking, then you need to accept the fact if he or she is involved with somebody else, it's because at least in that relationship, they do feel respected, liked, and loved. Now, I'm not saying that your spouse is definitely involved with somebody else. I don't even know who your spouse is. I'm not trying to tell you that. Although in just a moment, if you think there is somebody else, but he or she has not admitted that as of yet, I'm actually going to give you some ways to tell whether or not he or she might be having an affair. But right now, 
right now that's not the focus. The focus is trying to understand him, trying to understand her, to accept what it is he or she feels and to understand why he or she feels that way. Now, if you just walk in and sit in and say, okay, I just heard Dr. Beam say that maybe you feel disrespected, unloved, or disliked, so explain that to me. That's probably not going to work because if indeed he or she does feel disrespected, unloved, and disliked, you coming in and demanding that information, <laughs> it's not going to get you the truth. But if you try to understand why, then look at, hmm, how has he or she reacted before? What kind of things have I done that I've seen him or her pull away from me or get angry with me or just shut down around me and start doing some self-evaluation at this point? And if you start to understand why, you say, well, Dr. Beam, why is that important? Because, at least hopefully, it will change the way you interact with him or her. Because you're thinking only from the reference of your own self, you're not really going to grasp what's going on over there. And if you want to save this marriage, if you want your spouse to be in love with you again, then you're going to have to see things, at least to some degree, through his eyes or her eyes. But since I brought it up, I need to go ahead and finish it. You're saying, wait a minute, I heard those three things earlier, and one of those was he or she might be in love with somebody else. That's one of the possibilities. I'm not saying that's what the case is with you, but it's one of the possibilities. And if you're thinking, well, how, how would I know that? Okay, here's some of the signs that you can look for. Has your spouse's appearance changed in the last few weeks or last few months? In other words, they lost weight. They gone to the gym and got in better shape, started dressing in a different way, changed hairstyles. In other words, there's, there's a change going on in and of itself. It may not mean anything, but I'm going to give you a whole bunch of things to look at. Has my spouse's appearance changed? And is there some precipitating factor that did that that I'm aware of? Like he or she got a new job. Hmm. But no, no, I just see that he or she changed, but I'm not really sure why, but I can definitely see the change. Another thing is, is there any missing money? If, if there's money being spent by your husband or your wife and you can see it's being spent, but you don't know where it's going, again, in and of itself, it might be relatively innocent. But compared with this whole list I'm going to give you, it can start mounting up to being, there's a bunch of things going on at once. Oh, and here's another one. Is there missing time? Like, you know, she got off work at 530 and she said she was just going to drop by the grocery store and pick up a few things and be here. But she didn't get here until 9. And when she showed up, she had one bottle of milk, and it can't take that long to buy a bottle of milk. Now, if it's just something that happens rarely or very seldom, it might not mean anything. But if it happens more and more and more, it could be, okay, my husband sometimes doesn't show up. But he said, he said he ran into his buddies, and they stopped at the bar, and they had a couple of beers, and they started playing darts with each other, and time got away from him. That is a possibility. But again, we're giving you a whole list of things to look at together. So, for example, are there any uh, hidden bills? So what do you mean? Well, you used to get the bill about the cell phone, and you could see all the calls that your husband or wife made, and you haven't seen that bill for a while. It's like somehow it's being intercepted so you can't get your hands on it. And used to your husband or wife would leave the cell phone lying around, and if you wanted, you could actually pick it up and look at it if you chose to, but now it's carefully guarded, and if you get close to it, your spouse rescues it. Hmm. Another would be, is there... Uh, or have you discovered any hidden social media? Like, for example, are you suddenly blocked from your husband's or wife's Facebook page? Or you're not seeing what they tweet anymore? Or perhaps you run across evidence somewhere that maybe my husband or wife has a different Facebook page. My friend said she saw something my wife posted on Facebook the other day. I still have access to her page. I'm looking at it, and it's not there. So is there any hidden social media that you are aware of that you have found? And... Has your sex life changed? Not just has your sex life gotten worse, like we hardly have sex with each other anymore, or when we do make love, it's like my spouse is not really involved in it anymore. But it can also be just the opposite of that, like all of a sudden we're having sex more than we used to, and my spouse is really getting into it. If you're thinking, wait a minute, can an increased and enhanced sex life be a sign of an affair? It can. Now, any one of these things by themselves may mean nothing. and We're kind of building a pattern here. And another thing would be, have you started catching your spouse in lies? Relatively innocent lies in the sense that, oh, 
he said he was going to the grocery store to pick something up, and I just happened to be driving by, and his car wasn't there. And I mentioned later, oh, wait a minute, I, I was going to come in and shop with you because we need something, and I didn't see your car, and I went in to do the shopping with you, and you weren't there, and all of a sudden there's a different story. Oh, I meant to tell you. Now, if that happens once or twice, no big deal. But are you beginning to catch more lies and more lies and more lies? And are you beginning to notice a lot of mood swings where that sometimes your spouse is elated, sometimes your spouse is absolutely depressed, sometimes your spouse is angry, and it's gotten to where it just seems these things change relatively rapidly, and I don't understand. That's what you're thinking. I don't understand what's going on here. I just know that he's changed, or he's changed, and these mood swings are all going on. <sighs> or, or if you start asking questions like, why did you not show up until 10 o'clock when you said you'd be here at 7? Or there's, there's $100 missing here. I, I just want to know where it went. If you start asking those questions and in response, your sanity begins to be questioned. Like, I think you're going crazy. You, don't you remember I told you what I did with $100? Don't you know what I did during that time period? We discussed it already. When you know good and well, that didn't happen. And, and you're thinking, well, why is my sanity being questioned? Often that's a tactic that a person who's having an affair will use to throw you off the track. It's like a, a, the best defense is a good offense. Let me go at you and go at you so you wind up defending yourself so that now you're not attacking me or questioning me because you're busy, busy protecting. Or even if he or she now becomes defensive to any kind of questions. Like, where were you? What, you my mom? You're trying to control me now? Or what happened with the money? I am not going to live like that where I'm treated like a child and I can't spend $100 if I want to. Now, any of those things by themselves may mean nothing. Even two or three of them coupled together may mean nothing. But if you see all of those things happening, it may be. I am not telling you that definitively your spouse is having an affair, but it may be that he or she is being involved with somebody else, or at least involved in something they shouldn't be involved in. And so if you're thinking, wait a minute, then I, I need to get a private detective, right? Sure. If you want a divorce, go right ahead and do that. What? If you decide to get a private detective, if you decide to hide a GPS in his or her car, if you decide to somehow get an app on the phone where you can know where they are and they don't know that app is there, if you try to eavesdrop, sneak up behind them, all those kinds of things, you can do any of those things to catch them if you wish. But when you are caught snooping, prying, hiring somebody else, whatever it might be, when you are caught. It's not going to be about whatever he or she is doing. It's going to be about how dare you do that. How dare you violate my privacy? How dare you not trust me? How dare you? And, and rather than dealing with whatever it is your spouse is doing, it's going to be dealing with how devious and wicked you are and nothing good is going to come from it. And so when people say, should I do all those things? Should I do any of those things? I'm saying if you want out of the marriage and you want definitive proof so you can divorce him or her, go for it. But if you want to save the marriage, that's not the thing to do. You say, what is the thing to do? There's a lot of things. <sighs> I hate that as I get to the end of this video, because my time is out, that I can't tell you more about what to do, but we are glad to help you with that. We're Marriage Helper. You can find us at marriagehelper.com. You can see that on the screen. You can call us and talk to one of our client representatives who will help you know what we can do to help people. It's right there on the screen. I mean, we offer everything from coaches who can coach you through things. They, they won't coach you on how to catch your spouse, but they will coach you on the things that you can do that if you want to save this marriage are the things most likely to save it as opposed to the things that if you do, they're most likely to end it. In other words, get the right help. If you don't want us, then find the right help. I'm just telling you that we are a 501c3 nonprofit that has a lot of experience with this and that we do care and that we, on average, when people come to work with us with an affair, marriage in crisis, uh, our success rate is about three out of four are helping those couples work it out. Whatever you do, get the right help. Hey, write your comments below, write your questions below. Anything that you'd like to ask us about that we can handle, talk about, do on future videos, or just agree or disagree. <sighs> Dr. Joe Beam, Marriage Helper, we care. Let us help if we can.